Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now, here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. By now, you should know that if you have not tapped into social media for your marketing, you have truly fallen behind. There are overloads of information out there about how you can do it, but it's tough for you to find the time. So this is it. Seriously, Doc. This is what we as chiropractors have been waiting for. Qualified new patients contacting you with no added effort. 3S Chiropractic Systems is the company run by chiropractors with years of web and social media marketing experience, offering you the complete affordable done-for-you package. Doctors are receiving 10 to 45 new patient requests every month, so the service is swooping across the globe and is geographically exclusive, so you find out right now if your area is still available. They offer full money-back guarantee for the first month, so there is no risk. Apply at 3schiropracticsystems.com forward slash TCP to make sure you don't miss out. All right, TCP listeners, I have an incredible guest today, a returning guest, that is, and that's actually Dr. Tom Preston, one of my favorite people of all time, by the way. Dr. Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Ed. Thanks for that. <laughs> so, Dr. Tom, I mean, most people know who you are, but, you know, for those who are listening, maybe they haven't heard or listened to the chiropractic philanthropist before or checked out your previous episodes. Tell us a little bit about you. Tell us, you know, in a sentence or two, summarize, who is Dr. Tom Preston? Yeah, so I graduated almost 30 years ago. I feel like when Noah had an arc, right? I'm uh, love, uh, love of my life, my high school sweetheart. We're still together. God knows how that all happens. She puts up with me. Five beautiful daughters, one in Cairo school now, I might add, which I'm wow. proud of. And uh, yeah, I got into the coach consultant world almost 20 years ago. People started asking me how I did what I did, how I took 12 weeks of holidays a year, worked 25 hours a week and made a nice six-figure income. And I said, well, I could tell you. And uh, that's how I basically get into it. So you know, Full Circle Coaching and Consulting has been around now for almost 20 years, and uh, we've got four associate coaches, CA training division, marketing, full, full service thing. Love what I do, Ed, and I love this profession. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great augment to humanity living life fully. And uh, I was really super excited to hear um, from your team. So they reached out, said, hey, you know, Dr. Tom Preston has this incredible you know, value uh, that he's going to be dropping for doctors. And it was completely new. I mean, I've done 269 episodes now of TCP. We've never really die, dove into this discussion. But I also, you know, saw it as the opportunity for a little bit of therapy for me on my behalf. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, the associate uh, a trauma therapy. And, and you know, <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of trauma out there on this issue. I'm telling you. But, but I think, and this is why we need to have this discussion, why I think it's going to be so valuable to chiropractors today. Cause there's probably, I know there's chiropractors listening right now that are thinking the same thing. I thought maybe they either had a bad experience or multiple bad experiences with um, associates, or they're just simply in that place of like, look, I don't even know if this is the right avenue I should be pursuing or the path to go down. So, I mean, I'm going to roll right into the discussion, but I'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll share a little bit of, because people are probably going, well, what's, what happened with you, Ed? I'm going to summarize it real quick for you, Dr. Tom. So I had an associate, we had, we hired an associate. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll give you two stories. The first one's really quick and easy. I hired an associate. It ended up in the end, I was actually, I was actually giving him more salary than what I was taking home after about six months. So and common, it, man. I hate that <laughs> But I didn't know for about six months and it was the most uncomfortable situation. I had to sit down and either tell him, look, we have to do, you know, we have to either reduce your salary or we have to let you go. That was, that was uncomfortable for me. So, and then the other situation, I think we're going to talk or address both of these was basically I had someone come in and they took over probably, I don't know, 50, 60% of my patient load. And it just, they were there. Everything worked, was, was amazing. The practice grew well. But after a year, we just kind of split ways. Like they, 
they went and opened up somewhere else. And also a bunch of people from my office went with them. And so I think a lot of people, and I think that that could have been handled better in my, on my, like I've grown since then. So, (laughs) so I want to talk about both of those. So first thing is, you know, Dr. Tom, how do we even know if we should have an associate? What's that question? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think it's a starting place for, for all discussions around like anything in life, but let's, you know, particularly we're talking about associates or hiring anybody, but, and again, I'll make a distinction right off the bat. There's a difference uh, we, about recruiting and hiring, right? Mm. Hiring is about finding a little window of time and saying, Hey, who's the best person that happens to go across my radar screen and I'll pull them through. Recruiting is really doing all the work behind the scenes, behind the veil to determine whether you know, A, you should even have somebody, which we'll talk about. And if you know exactly who this person is, psychographic, demographic analysis, what outcomes they need to be achieved to be great at the role, um, you know, literally the UHP, um, what it is about you that makes it great for them to come and work for you, because if they're great, they probably got options for where they could be working. You know, a lot of work behind the veil. But in terms of answer the direct question directly, Ed, right, in terms of, you know, should I have an associate, you really want to question the why. And if it's, if it's about, I want to find, like, slave labor <laughs> that's cheap, <laughs> so that I don't have to work so damn hard and I can make more money, pretty much guaranteed the universe is going to slap you up alongside the head to teach you a lesson around that. And I, I'm joking, but I'm not. It's surprising how many senior docs I talk to that have that kind of mentality, right? So if there's something and you, you're really feeling like you want uh, to create either a succession plan, start mm. to think about an exit strategy, uh, find out ways to serve humanity at an expanded level, <clears throat> be able to have someone you trust to cover your practice members when you're on holidays, you know, those kinds of whys to me are more sustainable and they're more uh, grounded in something solid, right? Mm-hmm. And then, as you said, Ed, you got to be able to do the numbers. You got to be able to do the math to make sure that financially it makes sense. Because if it doesn't make sense financially, then you need to rework the numbers or maybe it's just not for you as an individual, right? So there's, there's, there's several places to look at it, obviously from the head on the business side, the numbers, and from the heart, the why is it you want this person to be there? Because as you probably remember it, it's a bit like a marriage, right? Yeah. You never really know somebody until you live with them. And then you live with them and it's like, wow, this isn't, you aren't exactly who I thought you were, right? So again, when you're recruiting, you're doing all of that backdrop work first so that you will recognize this person when they cross your radar screen, right? And I mean, you've completely systemized it. Like this isn't a theory. This is an implementation system you put together and you've been working on this for years. So you see, when I asked my man, my chiropractic um, I don't want to disparage anyone, but when I met when at the time, when I asked my coach, I said, you know, how, how do I know this is the right person to hire? He said, well, it's, if, if you can go out and have dinner with them and you like them, you know, that kind of an answer. And I was like, um, okay, yeah, I like them. I could go and have dinner with them. That was fun. So I guess I, I'm going to hire them, but it, it has to come down. Like, I mean, if any, there's anything I've learned, I mean, this is business. Like it has to come down the numbers. It has to make sense. Right. Yeah, 100% it does. And this is the thing I think a lot of docs make the error in judgment, right? Is they're not, they're not treating it like a business. Yeah. It's kind of more of a frenzy kind of a thing. And hey, I got lots of friends in the profession. I'd love to have a glass of wine with, have dinner with and stuff, but I wouldn't necessarily have them on my team, right? And so, you know, when you do that psychographic demographic analysis as an early step in my 15-step system, it's like it allows you to get a, a, a clearer picture about this person. And, you know, the outcomes assessments I talked about, right? It's like a lot of us as entrepreneurs never really had a lot of training in leadership 101, right? So we, we don't necessarily really clearly elucidate to our team members how to be great at the role. Right. And when you create outcomes, not job responsibilities, big difference. Right. Because if you have a job responsibility, people are going to filter that through their value systems to decide, you know, how they think it should work. When you got an outcome, it's clear how it needs to be obtained because people inherently, I think, want to do a good job. And I think it's part of the human condition. And so if we just tell them how to be good at the job and then give them the training and mentorship they need to do that, because, you know, as I'm relearning with my daughter at uh, chiropractic school right now, man, they ain't teaching that at school right now. They aren't teaching leadership. They aren't teaching patient management. They aren't teaching practice management. They aren't teaching business. There's a lot of stuff that they're not teaching because it's not part of their mandates. So where are they going to learn that? Hey, we got some great senior docs that could share that with, with you know, young associates. So what's the first step? I mean, because you've kind of defined, you know, there's a big difference between hiring and recruiting, but what's the first step that, you know, a doc listening right now in terms of like recruiting, what's the first step they should take? 
Well, the first step is to go in and ask yourself why you want an associate, as we discussed earlier, Ed, right? Yeah. And you look at that heartfelt piece. And if it's the slave labor to make money, probably time to maybe look in a different direction, right? But then I would suggest they go in and, and start to do some of the work, the, the psychographic, demographic analysis of who this person is, right? I mean, literally, do you want them to be young, old? Do you want them to be experienced? Not. Do the male, female, sports-oriented, pediatric-oriented? Do you want them to already have their ICPA certification? I mean, let's start listing out some 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 parameters for who it is you're actually looking for uh, so that again this as you well know ed right you're looking to target market these people you gotta you gotta have an avatar of who it is you're looking for right so those are some early steps uh, another one that i highly advocate for maybe even people listening already have an associate but a lot of docs um, sadly don't even have contracts written yeah associates right man that is a I, one of my mentors in that years ago ed said this he said tom good relationships need to be protected by good writing. And, you know, when I sat down with my last associate, the guy that ended up taking over my practice head, uh, we had a simple little five, six page agreement. I thought we'd sit down with a glass of wine in front of the fireplace for 20 minutes and just pound it through. Four and a half hours later, man, we're like still like wordsmithing this thing. And I would read a sentence and he'd go, I'd say, this is what this means to me. And he'd go, well, that isn't what it means to me. And it's like, Jesus, it's English words. How the hell could that mean something different to you? Right. But it's like, okay, what's the intent behind this? And then we, you know, work the wordsmith. So there are some steps like that, Ed, I think, that are really, again, behind the veil before you even go out and start recruiting that helps to uh, set the stage. Well, I mean, because, like, a lot of, like, I mean, so this almost seems like it's, it almost seems like from our discussion, like, it can become very complex. It can be very, very um expensive almost like i mean if you want you want someone to actually look at the 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 contract and agreement but i can tell you what's more expensive is when someone walks away with half your practice and and in terms of the relationship it costs too because like now you got all this resentment between between those people and that happens often doesn't it it really does i i learned i talk about it i've got a few few videos on youtube about my million dollar associate you know aaron (laughs) You know, I, I had somebody that was a, you know, supposed friend of mine and they came into my practice and we thought we could build something greater than either one of us could on our own. It was very noble gestures, you know, but again, you know, no, not that business savvy, not, not doing our homework properly. And uh, eventually she said to me, she goes, you know, if you're really my friend, you wouldn't need a contract. And I'm like, oh man, maybe I'm just an anal retentive asshole, you know? So I didn't get a contract out. Seven months later, she leaves with a hundred patient visits a week, right? Those days, hundred patient visits was about a hundred grand a year. I figure, you know, the way my practice ran, high PVA, it was probably a 10-year cycle, 10 times 100 grand is a million bucks, right? And it's like, wow, I, that, and that hurt. I, got, yeah. I mean, that deeply hurt me, right? Uh, and, and I don't want that to happen to other people, which is why I've set this program in motion. Because I've been doing this privately with private consulting clients for 12 years, right? And then finally the light bulb went on one day and said, you know what? There's so many more people that need to learn about this. Why don't we find a leveraged way to get it out there? So is why we've shot all the videos, got all the templates, got all the contracts, you know, everything's out in the paint by numbers kit. So that's, that's it. I mean, like, cause I'm a, I'm a systems and automation guy. Like I'm pragmatic. Like that's what I've learned about myself in the last few years. And that's kind of like, I'm kind of unconventional. I love teaching online content that way. So can you explain to us, like, I mean, so I'm, I'm a Cairo. I want to, I, well, maybe I think I want an associate, but I'm not really sure, but I need to do the numbers, but I don't know where to start. Where, where, and how do they access content for like to, the system you, should, you have? Yeah, great. Well, so again, anybody that's going to be listening to this, Ed, you know, we're going to have a link for them to be able to go down and download this tool that we developed years ago. It's called the Associate Doc Decision Maker. And what it does is it plugs in all the metrics about your particular practice, right? Your patient visit average, your uh, you know, service visit average, your overhead, the percentages that you're considering paying the associate. And then ideally, the associate would already have their two-year business plan. So by the way, any doc listening, any associate worth their salt should never set foot in your office unless they have at least a one-year, and I would recommend a two-year business plan. Okay. With a marketing plan that supports that. I have one I'm consulting with right now in, in, in California, and this doc is you know, a great doc, been in practice 12 years, um, you know, solid practice, does about 250000 a year in revenue. This new associate fresh out of school, her business plan had her making eight hundred and fifty grand her first year out. And it's like, hey, you know what? I don't want to pee in your parade. It's possible, <laughs> but it's not probable based upon this dynamic, right? So anyways, once you get those numbers, you just plug them in, and then the spreadsheet just populates, and it says, hey, this is what it's going to cost you to have this person in your, in your practice. This is what income they're going to generate. This is your take. This is their take you know, what's your deal? 
And as we were talking off camera, my, my, my last associate took over my practice. He was a rock star, man. And he hit it out of the park. And I'm biased, but I think he had some good mentoring along the way, you know. And uh, this guy cost me money the first nine months uh, that he was in my practice. Had I not done that math on ahead and seen that in advance and been okay with that because I was in it for the long-term play, right, then, you know, I would have got to a point as so many docs that have consulted with me do, they go, Jesus, Tom, I don't know what's going on, man. Practice seems to be going, but I'm not making any money. Like the associate, as you said, has taken home more money than I am. It creates resentment. Eventually, the senior doc goes, hey, why don't I sell you the damn practice and I'll become your associate, right? You can have the hassles and the headaches and the lease payments and all the things. Right? Write all the checks, man. Yeah, yeah. You do all the hassles and I'll have the fun. So, again, doing that work up front is great. The, the ADDM, the Associate Doc Decision Maker, free download. People can go and, and hook that up uh, and, and, and run the numbers. That on, the, on the left brain or, you know, logic side of it, of course, doing the hard work about why they want somebody, why they want to share their lives with somebody. It is, like you said, a bit of a marriage. And this is, this is what I love about this, too, and why I was excited to talk about this is because, you know, I, I've kind of – well, you know, you've, you've helped – you helped Karen and I so often, you know, over the last two years. And, you know, as we kind of transitioned from one business to another, I mean, what I've learned is business is business straight up. Yep. This is just about making a good business decision as to whether it's a good time to hire someone. And I, 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 re- I relate to you in our pre-chat. I'm like, look, I had this opportunity on an, another side business that I had to, to do, to bring someone on to manage the business. But at the end of the day, when I crunched the numbers, it just didn't make sense to give 30 or 40% of my business away. Again, in the long run, right? With the potential that I could make more. Right. Um, but we don't, but you don't know that. So let me, let me bring this back. So there's always a couple questions that docs ask when we talk about things like this. First of all, is there a system? Meaning like, can I actually do this? And is it like, um, is it like duplicatable? So like people can actually do this and it is duplicatable. They do the associate doc decision maker. They're like, okay, I should get a, uh, get a, a doc on board, but this is a system they can, they can implement. Yeah, hundred percent. And if they see the value in that and they say, Hey, I want help in going from soup to nuts to how to do that. I mean, that's what I created this program for shot all the videos, have all the templates for that I've used with my private consulting clients for many years. Right. But now I want to find a way to get it out to more docs because, you know, I wave, as you said, at business is business and I've got several other businesses as well. Right. But I love the chiropractic profession. I love who we are, what we stand for, the possibility it allows for people. And you know what, Ed, the damn profession isn't growing. It ain't growing very fast. Right. And there's lots of reasons for that, but I think this is one of the pieces, you know, I've heard a stat that came from a, pretty well-known person at Life University that said, you know, right now, the attrition rate of new graduates, the five-year attrition rate is about 25%. Yeah. It's like, man, I mean, I'm helping my daughter fund her education at chiropractic school right now. These people are 150, 250 grand. And and five years from now, they're not even in the profession anymore. One in four of them. That is sad, right? And part of the reason is because things like this, there is no very little succession planning in the profession. Senior docs are terrified to do the associate thing because they heard their buddy got, you know, scorpion stung or lost a million bucks, right? Yeah. And, and then the young ones coming in are going, well, I don't trust them because I don't think they know what they're doing and there's no real mentorship here and guidance for how to do this. And is there a long-term play? Because, you know, as part of our system, at, a, at, a, at sort of at a, an advanced version for some, is to really look at a junior partnership buy-in down the road somewhere. Mm. So senior docs can get equity back out of the business if – the, the, the associate has vetted and has proven that they're worthy of becoming a partner, right? And there should be benchmarks set in place, which I go into in the program to explain how to figure that stuff out, right? But they are because they're like a really, really good entrepreneur, and they're probably going to want a piece of ownership at some point, right? Yeah. So how do you do that? And you know what? Architects, lawyers, accountants, they've done this beautifully for years. They have associates, junior partners, senior partners. What the hell's up with the chiro profession? Why are we sleeping with our head behind the door? You know, this is the models out there we could be duplicating because business is business, as she wisely stated. Why not borrow something from them? So I got a meeting actually with my accountant Ed, in a couple of weeks to really go through because I think his system is probably the best I've ever heard of. Associate, junior partner, senior partner, you know, salaries, productivity models, bonuses. You know, they've got a good structure. I've got a few models. I just been talking to him. I think he's got a a really high end one. And I think that that's an option. Now that junior partner buying isn't for everybody yet, but I think it's a good option for a, 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 an associate that proves their worth. And again, now you've got somebody to help carry the weight. You've got this early stages of succession planning, which again, I, I think is another thing that is a conversation that I'm hoping will be starting to be had more in this profession. Yeah. And, um, 
I, I definitely see, you know, like I have a good friend that's a dentist. I mean, and this is, this is how it's done in, in dentistry. Like she, yeah, she's been a dentist for, gosh, it must be 15 years now, but she's had the opportunity to buy into the practices she's in, but she's, she just basically has found these amazing IC or, or associate type relationships and it works for her. Um, and she's there for like five years and it's an amazing relationship for them and it works well both ways. Um, so I, I sometimes think that like, I think the bad relationship I had with my associates, I would, I'd walk away and be like, oh, well, they're entitled. You know, just like, you know, that kind of thing. But now that I've, I'm a little, you know, a little more business savvy, maybe, I think maybe um, it was just we didn't have clearly defined, you know, um, what, what I wanted and what they wanted. And maybe it just wasn't a fit. Clearly, it wasn't a fit from, from the beginning. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I, you know, the first of my 15 step paint by number kid, Ed, right? The first seven steps are literally behind the veil. Like before you ever even go out and start, you know, actively recruiting through your network. Uh, and if your network doesn't work, you go to, you know, ad space and so on, right? Is because you want that clarity up front to ensure that it is, it is the right idea for you at this time in your career and that, uh, you know, you're going to really get a good fit. Because I would rather a doc spend extra weeks or months uh, if necessary, waiting for the right person to cross or then to make a bad hire. Because, man, one of my mentors has a principle he calls the doorman principle. And, you know, Manhattan's my wife, Shelly and I's favorite city, right? And they have doorman at the, you know, in, in, in the Upper East Side and stuff. And he says, here's what the doorman does. The door, he says, it's a lot harder to get somebody out of your life than it is to not let them in in the first place. So he has this, you know, this mental doorman he has in his, in his mind before that he allows anybody, friendships, business partners into his world. And I think it's a great sort of mental filter to put up to just really be thinking about who is this person? Because as you found out, Ed, getting them out of your life or your business is, is, is tough. And it's, it's emotionally draining and it usually ends up costing you money, which is not wise. Well, and this is, thank you for this. Actually, you answered the, my next question, which was, where do I go? You answered that already. And um, in that, uh, the, the next question that I would like to answer, and I know that most docs are going to be thinking about is timeline. Like how long, realistically, how long does it take for a doctor to really put this into play and start recruiting? Yeah, great question. So uh, actually, one of my friends in the profession asked me that question this morning by email. And I said, you know what, I've had people do this work and have like a finished, complete 15-step program in two weeks, I've seen them take six or eight weeks to get that done. So once it's done and, then, and the wheels are in motion, I've seen people literally in the shortest two weeks, my private consulting clients, two weeks come up with like a fit, and I've had other people spend six months. So there's a pretty broad range there, you know. I think a lot of it has to do with how much work people are literally willing to do behind the scenes, how active they are, and, you know, uh, law of attraction plays a role here, right? Like how, how focused in this are you? Are you... Are you in it or you just kind of think it's a good idea? There's a lot of variables there, but there is a, a two week to six month timeline in my experience. So how bad do you want it really? Right. Totally. So, yeah. like, like everything else, right. You know, in life. Beautiful. So I'm going to head of, had to uh, have everyone head over to the chiropractic philanthropist.com. We're actually going to have a webpage dedicated to our discussion with Dr. Tom Preston today. We're going to have all the clickable resources as well. So um, that clickable resource for the associate doc decision maker. So whether you're thinking of getting an associate or you're not sure if it's a fit or even if you're just curious, I think everyone should probably go. Even if you have an associate clearly right now, maybe you should go and actually do it anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Just to you know, get the things. And then you know, this helps you do that forecasting piece of it. But I would really encourage everyone that's listening to, you know, so that gives you the sense of should I. But if you do have somebody in your business or you're bringing somebody in, be sure that you take those projections and then create like an actual sheet as well so mm -hmm. you can track it month by month to say like where are we because you know if you, projections are one thing but there, there's a lot of assumptions and what ifs in there and you know when you're actually seeing what's happening things can happen quicker or slower than people plan and you need to make adjustments accordingly as you go through you know the relationship so I'm going to, I'm going to just because we're around that time, I'm going to wrap the, the discussion up and, and I want to thank you so much. But before I do, I want to get one final thought from you. And, and that is, you know, we've been kind of speaking more to the docs. Let's speak to the associates right now. So if you could say any final thoughts or any, any tips or advice when, a, when an associate is looking for that right fit as well, could you want to maybe speak to them? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would think that uh, you would want to work with a senior doc that's, that's done their homework, right? That's either done a program like this, or at least has a lot of mental energy and thought into, you know, who and wow and why. And they also have it in writing there. That's so stinking important. I think that the uh, good associate would want to be working on their business plan, whether they're, you know, in, in, in their later tries or quarters of school or whether they're fresh out so that they have a sense of what they want to do. And then they can take that to a doc as well as the marketing plan that supports that business plan, right? So that's a bit of homework they could be doing regardless of where they are. And then, you know, you want to be making sure that this person's a good fit. You want it in writing. I think one of the things most young associates want is they want mentorship. They want guidance, you know? And so let's have that in writing. What is the mentorship schedule? How often every week are we going to meet? It's probably more front end loaded the first couple months, a little less later, but let's get that in writing. Let's get clear about what it is we're going to talk about. Let's not just sit down and go, hey, doc, what do you want to talk about today? Let's get some structure behind this because that to me, that is someone who's organized who really is going to take good care of that associate. That's the one that I would want my daughter to go and work with. And, uh, you know, even in our pre-chat, I'd said, you know, when we were discussing our conversation that we might be having today and it's kind of just more, more it has flowed more like a conversation today is I was like, man, I wish I had this you know, <laughs> three years ago or two years ago when I was in practice. So, no, I, I truly appreciate you coming on TCP today and actually sharing this. I think it's absolutely vital for all chiropractors who are just really looking at going to the next level, which for most of us is going to be bringing on someone who is, but someone who is the right fit. So, um, yeah, Dr. Tom, thank you so much for being on uh, the Chiropractic Philanthropist today. And um, I really enjoyed speaking to you and, and for giving back as, as always. Uh, man, it's a real honor, and I really love what you're doing with your life, Ed, and, and the difference you're making, and Karen as well. So thanks for uh, having me here and supporting what we're up to. It's a, I think it's, it's a win-win for everybody. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to thechiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on The Chiropractic Philanthropist.